welcome to another video. <laughs> Me too. Okay, first thing, let's get this out of the way. Are you happy that this is going to go on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok? Yeah. I'm here with Angelica, and Angelica has very kindly allowed us to film this process. We're going to be doing a mock test. Tell us a little bit about you. Where are you from? I uh, was born in London, raised in London, but my parents are Italian. Italiani! Si! Okay, if you want a really good meat the bowl as a recipe, that's, you know, that's, it, that's American, they don't do that, yeah. do they? No. Um, so Italian, right? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, Italian, we've got an Italian in London, but well, British Italian. Yes. Uh, how do you feel about your driving? It's been a long journey, let's just say that. Um, I was a very scared driver. Like when I got into it, I was very scared. Um, still am a bit, but I've definitely like gotten a bit more confident yeah I'd, yeah I'd say that do you are you doing any private practice or are you doing everything just with instructors with me oh driving with my parents yes yeah yeah, yeah. You, i drive you, a bit you, with you my started parents. doing yeah. that we encourage you to do that yeah. don't we? how how has driving like at home in with your with your folks with your mum and your dad how does um, that change things it's been things? really helpful because i had to like get more response gain be oh, more responsible fun, yeah. for my own actions yeah, the fact that they don't have the pedals other than the ha like they just have the handbrake, so I had to take more. They can only really finish. tell you to stop, can't they? Exactly. Yeah, so it's kind of more up to you. I really strongly, if you have the opportunity to to do private practice, I really strongly recommend it because you can do lessons with your instructor, and of course it's all good and you will develop and you'll grow. But the moment you're at that stage where you're ready to be able to go out and drive with your family, it does. It just you, yeah. you just all of a sudden have so much more responsibility, and you have to you make of, more decisions. Yeah. That was kind of one of your things, yeah. wasn't it? You, you don't like making decisions. Yeah, I'm very indecisive, but it forced me to be decisive. But we're better now, aren't we? Yeah. <sighs> if you would like to do a mock test on my channel, then obviously hit me up on Instagram. I'll put a little thing down here and send me a DM and we can talk about it. Absolutely no problem. Oh, follow me as well. Part of the deal. And if you get any benefit from this video, like, comment and subscribe because it really does boost the channel and pushes this video out to other people and then other people will find it and then love it and then it just, you know, grows. That's the way it is and it, and it supports, supports the channel. Uh, all this is for free. At all times, I'd like you to follow the road ahead unless I tell you to turn left or turn right or unless road signs indicate otherwise. Mm -hmm. If I need you to turn, I'll tell you in good time. We're going to mm -hmm. take in one reverse and we leave a possibly an emergency stop and I'll be asking you some show me, tell me questions. We're also going to be following the sat-nav for about 15 to 20 minutes independent drive now if at any stage you're not sure where you're going please ask because you can if you're not sure tell me how you would switch your headlights from dipped to main beam and how would you know that they're on inside the car yeah you would turn the wheel and then press forward but, I mean, that's pretty much it so you switch your lights on and then you press that forward in the blue light yeah. amazing so when we see you next we'll be starting the test it's quite a short intro this one unless you want to tell us a story or something <laughs> Got any interesting stories? Uh, what, do you, what do you do for a living? I'm a student. I'm at university. Yeah, nobody wants to know that. All right. <laughs> when we see you next, we'll be starting the test. Whenever you're ready, drive on. This is the first time that Angelica has ever had to really drive truly independently. And she does have a test coming up soon. She's come a long way, having been incredibly nervous throughout her training. So this is going to be a great experience. And then Angelica, we're going to take the second row on the right. The first is here. The second is just there. It's a good confidence start by Angelica. All her mirror work and observations, along with timings of signals, is bang on. She then deals with this pedestrian walking across the road well, reducing speed. I'm just going to wait for this woman to go. Making sure she doesn't push up on her. And then at the roundabout, we're going to turn right. At this roundabout, she ultimately does okay. Everything's fine until her signal cancels. And she doesn't reapply it. As I'm sure you're aware, it should be a right signal and then a left to exit. Now, there is a car approaching, which isn't majorly affected by this. So in this case, it's not noteworthy. But be careful. If your signal cancels, reapply. Okay, so at the end of the road here, turn right. 
Angelica's clearly nervous, but she's keeping it together. The first five minutes of a driving test, you're always the most nervous. But she's talking through her process and remaining in control. It's a good start. Okay, Angelica, if you could find somewhere to pull up on the left in a safe place for me, okay. please. So, gonna go past these cars. Somewhere here. Angelica again has no problem with this pull up on the left. She talks herself through the process, does her mirrors and signal, and positions well. Fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna start the independent drive. Fine, Satnav. And again, if you're not sure where you're going, ask. Drive on when you're ready. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the first exit, Thumbs Lane. Okay, first exit on the roundabout. So that's to the left, I assume. <laughs> cross the roundabout and take the first exit. This particular roundabout can be a banana skin for some people. They don't notice that it splits into two lanes, but Angelica has absolutely no problem here at all. It's also relatively busy, but she takes her gap when it comes. Okay, I'm going to wait for these guys to get past. There's a new shield. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> there is. And then again on the next roundabout, she again has no problem. So no Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. And then when she approaches the stop sign, she brings the car to a complete halt. Okay, so we need to stop here. There's a man in the road. Angelica removes all temptation by not looking to the right until she's come to a complete stop. No rolling. This is a very useful tactic okay. because if you see it's clear, you could be easily tempted to keep moving. Another option would be to come to a stop and secure the vehicle with the handbrake. Let's wait for this guy to get past. Whatever works for you. Okay. Shortly, I'm going to ask Angelica to pull up on the left in a safe place. And this is quickly becoming an infamous place to do it. She smacks into the curb. And then, Angelica, if you can find somewhere to pull up on the left in a safe place for me, please. This is incredibly painful. Raise curb. And I think the last time I'm going to allow it to happen. Some of you might be wondering why I don't prevent this. But this is the thing with a mock test. If you prevent them from doing it, they may think they wouldn't have. This particular pull up on the left seems to catch people out and I can see why. The bay is quite small and it's on a bend. The fix, however, is relatively simple. The driver sits on the right hand side of the car approximately 10 to 15 centimeters from the outer edge of the vehicle. So if Angelica had put her line of sight along this line here and then followed the contour of the bend, she wouldn't have hit it at all. Okay, it's all right. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, just stay there for a second because I gotta check that tire because you hit that really hard. I'm sorry. That's okay. After just a quick check, just to make sure the tyre's okay, we're back on the road. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. God, that was so bad. We'll find out in a bit. <laughs> That's never happened. That's what Sarah said. Oh, when she... <laughs> it's funny, it's, in, it's exactly the same place. Oh, seriously? Oh, God. Okay. Whoops. It was going well. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. It's all part of the process. Okay, all right, so whenever you're ready, drive on. Angelica's now faced with a tricky move off from the side of the road, but she doesn't panic and waits for her moment to move. It's quite possible in a moment like this, especially after making a mistake like that, that she could feel tempted to rush, but she doesn't. And this is exactly what she should do.
And then after all that waiting and just before moving off, she checks the blind spot again. After the next junction, we find ourselves in a good situation to do the parallel park exercise. Okay, that's it. And then if you could just pull up on the left just before that gray car, silver yeah. car. We're now going to do the reverse parallel park using that vehicle there. I'd like mm -hmm. to move off next to it and then reverse the car back in, finishing off within two car lengths of space okay. and reasonably close to and parallel to the curb. Do you understand two car lengths of space? So I have two car lengths of space. The back end fit. of your car is yeah. the second car length. So no more than really one space between you. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Angelica struggles here. She's learned how to do the parallel park using a reference point method. And it's not that a reference point method doesn't work, but the problem is if you get the angle slightly wrong. Got a bit too far. Okay, now reverse. The whole thing falls apart. Let's go a bit slower. Okay, now when we're here, I'm going to lock the wheels to the left. If there's a car coming, I'm going to have to pause exactly like that, because <laughs> there's a van coming. What she is doing, though, is demonstrating very good observation. Now I'm going to keep locking the wheels. The mistake she makes, though, is she swings too wide. Still straightened. And then as she comes backwards, she touches the curb. Now turn She's not using the car in front to judge the space. No, I'm no, no, no. <laughs> at all. Let's move out again. Touching the curb is not a problem, but what you must not do is go up it. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Okay. I went too um, wide. She has realized what the problem was. Okay. But she hasn't lost the good, effective observation. Pay attention to that. There's a car coming. I'm going to pause for a sec. Hopefully, they can get. <laughs> Now, okay, now straighten. This angle is much better. There is less risk of hitting the curb. And she's doing a much better job of lining up with the car in front. But the mistake she's making is this car is parked very close to the curb and she mounts the pavement. Okay, just stop no. there because you're going. Yeah. You're on the curb. <laughs> You've mounted the curb there. Okay, it's all right. <laughs> Don't worry about it. What does it tell us that we need to practice? Parallel. That's what it's for. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to leave it there. Drive on when you're ready. Now this is not a parallel park video, but there's a couple of things that I think I could point out here that might help you if you're struggling with this. There are two important points that you must assess before you start this maneuver. Number one, how far is the car in front from the curb? If the car you're parking on is this close, I would strongly recommend you err on the side of caution. Don't try to come in too tight. And two, as you swing out, pay attention to the angle that you're using to come out of the space because it's very likely that same angle is what you need to come back in. You could also pay attention to what the car in front looks like at this angle and how much steering you use to come out. This all could help you in the end. Right. Angelica is now turning right third exit on the apex corner roundabout, a large complex Go junction. Right roundabout and take the third exit. Angelica ultimately does very well on this junction, but there's somebody else who pops up next to us 
who demonstrates exactly what you shouldn't do. I mean, I could have, but like, no. <laughs> Pay attention to the red car that now pulls up on the left-hand side, which is in the middle lane, but is signalling right. Angelica spots a gap in the traffic, but she's got to be quick. But as she moves off, the car on her left pulls straight in front of us. Sorry, sir, that was really rough. And gets in the way. Should that car have done what she just did? No. The red car is continuing to signal right. Okay, so now first. But then switches signal to left and follows the road ahead. Now after this one. If you had done this on your test, this definitely wouldn't have worked out. The red car was in the correct lane for Totteridge, which is the middle lane, which the road markings indicate here, which is following the road ahead where the vehicle wanted to go, which emphasises the importance of reading road markings. If the red car had read the road markings, then it would have been in this lane here and followed its lane to its exit. But instead, it performs two risky lane changes, completely avoidable. Angelica, however, does very well. Wide, but also checking that no one is coming. And then cancel. She's now faced with a normal driving position conundrum. Pick up the speed. Picking up speed is definitely a good idea because it helps to create gaps behind you, but she should also be thinking about moving back to the left. The speed you're traveling and timing is essential on this one. She's now being caught by the vehicle in the left-hand lane. She does move back, I'm think about going back to the left. but it takes a while. Could Angelica have done better here? Not moving back to the left on your driving test is marked as a serious fault for normal driving position. However, it's also important to plan when it's safe to do so. Angelica has a bus at a bus stop and what she needs to do is pick up her speed so that she can then think about moving back to the left. Although Angelica does pick up her speed a bit, it's not enough and the white car catches her. If she'd used her speed better, she would then be able to signal as she passes the bus, informing the white car of her intention to move back. Sometimes being passed on the left is unavoidable, but I do think she could have done better here. And then, after the white car has gone past her, it takes her a little while to then move back to the left. So if you find yourself in a situation like this, Use your speed better. After 400 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, Lawrence Street. Then turn left. Okay, so I'm actually in the right position, I guess. At this next roundabout, Angelica almost misses her turn. She realizes at the last moment and swerves left. On the day in the car, it felt a lot worse. So we're turning left? Is already left? The safest thing to do if you think you've missed your turn... Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, Lawrence Street. Then turn left. ...is just to do that and not turn. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> However, she has little impact on the vehicle behind. So is this one... So on this one, she gets away with it, and it's just a driver fault for turning left. Turn left, uphill road. Angelica is now going to perform the emergency stop exercise. We're now going to perform the emergency stop. I'd like you to bring the car to an immediate and abrupt halt on the full control. My signal will be stop. Okay. I'll be making sure it's nice and safe behind us before I ask you to do it. So whenever you're ready, drive on. And stop. Okay, thank you very much. I won't ask you to do that again. Drive on when you're ready. As Angelica goes to move off here, there's a car coming up behind us. Now in this situation, the best thing to do would just be to remain stationary until the vehicle comes by. She doesn't have a major impact, but she possibly could have done better. A little further up the road, she has a stutter on the gears. At the end of the road, turn right, A5109 Marsh Lane. She just picks gear four instead of two. 
It's a minor impact, but it is an impact on the vehicle behind, so this is just a driver fault for gears. Angelica is about to have to emerge from a tricky closed junction on the top of a hill. Turn right, A5109, Marsh Lane. She looks left first, but in this case it's not noteworthy. But on the turn she steers a bit wide and slightly oversteers. She controls it, so this is just a driver fault for steering. There are two things of note here as she goes down this hill. One, she controls the car very well going downhill. And two, when asked the show me question, she does make sure it's safe to do so. When it's safe to do so, could you beat your horn for me, please? Is that anyone here? No. That'll do. Thank you very much. When driving downhill, it can be very tempting to put your clutch down, but if you do so, the car will increase speed. Angelica has no such issues here. Big, big truck. And then deals nicely with this meeting situation. And then you're going to take the next road on the right here for me, please. On this next right turn, Angelica takes a risk. The junction's on a bend and visibility is poor. She cuts across the line and the junction. In this case, it's just a driver fault. But if a vehicle had been coming from the other direction or emerging from that junction, that could have easily been a serious. But she then deals with this tight space well, keeping her speed down. There are only two more situations of note on this mock test, so we're going to jump straight to the first one. Angelica's hit three curbs on this test, one quite severely and one when she mounted the curb in the parallel park. Okay, so at the roundabout, which is just around the bend, you're going to turn left. Angelica's just travelling a little bit too fast. She's got a sign warning her of the bend, and she doesn't drop her speed enough. The road also seems to tighten up, and because of this, she's bound to clip the curb. In this case, I'm going to put it down as not noteworthy, but if you want to save your tyres or potentially risk getting a more severe fault, reduce speed. Angelica then deals very well with this mini roundabout and takes her opportunity as it arises. The last thing of note occurs as we turn back into test centre. Angelica has a pedestrian priority problem. And then you're going to take the second road on the left. The first is here, second is into Beaufort Park there. Whenever turning into or out of junctions, now that the new pedestrian priority rule has come into play, you must always look for them. And there is one waiting to cross and a car giving way. I have to intervene. I'm, I'm going to just stop you there. Okay. Get one. All right, I'm gonna give you back control of the car. Yeah. Drive on. You have a lot to think about when you're turning into junctions, not only control, but everything else. But pedestrians must become part of the equation. Not only has this pedestrian stepped foot into the road, but a car is also waiting for them. And not only that, but there's a sign indicating a pedestrian crossing. This could be a lapse in concentration but ultimately it generally comes down to speed. When turning into or out of junctions, take your time, rush, and you'll miss something. And that's it, folks. End of test. How was that? I think ups and downs in the sense that like, when I was driving well, it was well, but then when I would mess up, I would really mess up. Like I. For some reason, I, this never, I, I mean, I never ever went onto the actual, uh, like, on top of the curb on before. The yeah, and for some reason it just kept happening. Done it three times, haven't you done it today? Yeah, I don't Is know. Is that again? You've done it three times today. It was I don't know why, like, I do know why, but I just, it was just kept happening. So that was really unfortunate. <laughs> um, and then obviously, la like, in the last two seconds, I nearly... I didn't see the woman because the car was obstructing and that, that was my fault. The car was obstructing? I mean, she was there, yeah. The I car was waiting for her, was allowing her to cross. Mm. 
and then she started walking out. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that was, was that was serious. Um, uh, yeah, I think at that moment we had to slow down because you've got a pedestrian priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right, so they're in the road. The car's also letting them go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are signs as well some along there, not, yeah. I'm not sure on that little yeah, bit there, that, really that say that they've it's kind of like a pedestrian crossing, or mm -hmm. that's not. Mm -hmm. Not really. Not a proper pedestrian crossing. Yeah, that uh, was really annoying because... Yeah. Okay, so the, the the parallel park, obviously curb. Let's talk about that because you just mentioned the curb. Um, obviously, you swung out really wide, and yeah. then you just didn't realise, and you just kept coming back yeah. and back and back. You, you're following a system, and the problem is with the system is once things don't go quite right within the system, you're to. not able to step out of it and look at it and go, "Hang on a minute, this position is definitely wrong." Mm. I thought I could make it, but are you allowed to touch the curb? Yeah. Okay. You can't. But you touched it, and then once you touched it, you just drove up it. <laughs> yeah. I think because it's never really happened to me, so I don't know what it feels like to go up. Resistance. So you don't realize. You're yeah. driving forwards. The moment you feel some form of yeah, resistance, yeah. you know you're up. Yeah. No, 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 for sure. Like, okay. So that's the first one. Uh, the obviously smacking into. Yeah. The when curb. I. Yeah. That was. And really... you hit it at the um, at the point where there was bits sticking out, so it sounded a lot worse. Did anything happen? I don't think so. I think the tyres were right. We did an emergency stop straight after that. <laughs> the car stopped. Uh, but yeah, and what sort of speed should you, if you're pulling up on the left? No, you need, I should have slowed down more. And then the last one where you hit the kerb as you're coming underneath that. Yeah, um, I stupidly was changing my gear while going around. When but again, what speed were you traveling? Too fast. Did you see around the bend? No. Did it seem really tight? <laughs> so what should you be doing with your speed? Slow down. It's really easy. Do you know what? Any of us can hit curves. It doesn't matter how good you are as a driver. If you don't moderate your speed properly in those moments, you are going to hit the curve. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, pass or fail? Probably a fail. <laughs> Do you think the parallel part would have done it just by itself? I mean, I, I don't know. With hitting the curb, how does it work? Is that I serious? I mean, you mounted the curb. I didn't even let you complete the manoeuvre. So that's a fail. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a fail. Okay. All right, look. Now, yeah. before I go into this, I do want to say this is your first experience. This is Angelica's first experience of driving solo, completely solo. And it's different. I know we've done some independent driving mm -hmm. in lessons. No, but this is different. But it's not the same. This is really... And this is why, again, mock tests are so amazing. Okay. With you. Yeah. I, I thought there, were, there are sections of your driving I thought were really good. Should be. Okay, let's let's go over the serious. That woman. Yeah. Okay. I mean that's serious, potentially dangerous, actually, because she's walking and I've mm -hmm. had to physically intervene. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually put that down as a potential dangerous. It's borderline between serious and dangerous. Okay, you've got to be careful. Normal driving position. Okay, so you've come off uh you've come off onto the dual carriageway and you did the apex. I thought you did the apex quite well. Uh, but then when you came off it, you're driving in the right-hand lane. And you're within the right-hand lane for ages. And actually, then a car passes you on the left. Shouldn't be there. Yeah. You've just come off the roundabout. You accelerate. I like that. Get moving. But go back And then to straight away, what should you be doing? Think about going back But you've to gone the around the bend, then around the bend, then you go... And oh, then I, I only realise, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the sat-nav is telling you to turn left anyway. Okay. This was Angelica's experience of a mock driving test. Thank you so much for allowing us to film it and to put it out there. And I do hope that you're going to get a huge benefit from watching this video. I also hope that you get some huge benefit from actually doing this drive. We've got a few things that we need to go away and work on. Yeah. We need to space. Pulling up on the left, we can't. Some of these things, like, you, you know, you're just coming in way too fast. Yeah. We need to do some reversing, don't we? Yeah. This has been Angelica's Mock Test. If you like what you've seen here, hit the like button, subscribe if you want more content, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Get well out. <laughs>